leaving you at home. Our pastor, Pastor Lee Walker the second. Come on, can we bless God for our kids?
verse from 1 John 4, chapter 18, verse. It's our theme verse for this series, Perfect Love. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. That's beautiful right there. Perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. There is no fear in love. If you believe God's word, say that with me. There is no fear in love. In love. Come on, y'all say like you don't believe it. There is no fear. There is no fear in love. In love. Do you know what God's word is saying? There is no stress in love. Watch this. There's no anger in love. There's no anxiety in love. There is no fear in love. Come on, let's bless God for, the, for his word. Bless God. Thank you, Mr. Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. God, we bless you. Father, we thank you that your word is blessed and that your people are blessed. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Awesome. Awesome. Can we bless God for the worship team? Amazing. 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 Bless God for you. Thank you. Musicians, minstrels, thank God for you. Um, yeah. Um, listen, you may have your seats because I'm gonna read some more, but I'm not gonna have you standing because it's a few verses and I don't want y'all to uh, get tired of standing. So, uh, but since you're not standing, if you would follow with me uh, in God's Word, uh, beginning in Daniel the third chapter. On last week, we preached the word. On last week, we preached the word. Saying that it wasn't meant to kill you. Listen, whatever you're going through wasn't meant to kill you. Whatever you're going through was not meant to kill you. And I, we're kind of picking up from that on this morning, and it's sort of like a part two of it wasn't meant to kill you. Last week we were talking about Moses and uh, the Israelites as they were coming through uh, the Red Sea, coming through on dry ground. And the Bible says that a wind, an east wind, blew the water up on both sides. And, and while they went through, while they were fearful of going through, fearful of going through, uh, God made a way. God made a way. How many know that God is a way maker? Yes, he is. God is a way maker. He'll make a way when there seems to be no way. And God is a way maker. And, 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 and what the enemy tries to do is try to keep you from going through the different ways that God will make for you. And see, because God will might, he'll, he won't make the same way every time. Amen. No, and we can't, we can't put God in a box. We have to allow God to be God. Amen. And, and he'll make a way through. He'll even make a way out. But oftentimes before he makes a way out, he's going to make a way through. And fear would have you think that you won't make it through what you're going through. I promise you, most of those people that were walking through that Red Sea didn't think that they would make it through that because water was going up on both sides. And, and they didn't think they were going to make it through that. But they made it through. They made it through. And see, the thing that would keep them from going through and experiencing God on a whole new level uh, is fear. Fear, again, fear, the purpose of fear or I like to say the function of fear would have you to turn and take flight. The Greek word for fear, the meaning of it means to turn or run away from, to take flight or run away from. And if you think about going through something, because how many know that we all have something to go through? If you're not going through something right now, just hold on. Listen, we all, we all have something that we have to go through. And oftentimes it's through that experience that God wants to teach us more about him, that God wants to reveal another characteristic about him, reveal more about himself through what you go through. That's why oftentimes it's more important. God gets more glory from what we go through than not going. 
so than uh, us not going through it. See, oftentimes we want God to deliver us from it or to keep us from what we're going through. Our prayer oftentimes is that, Lord, keep this from happening to me. Lord, don't let this happen to me. But what I came to tell you today is that oftentimes God gets more glory from us going through. And we will try to put it away and, and think that it's faith that will believe God from keeping us away from us. But actually what it is is fear. Lord, I don't want to have this surgery. Lord, I, I, I can't have it. And, 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 the, and the, what, the, what fear tells you is that you don't have enough strength to make it through this. You don't have enough strength to make it through this. But how many of you know the devil is a lie? The devil is a lie. God is faithful. And, and listen, as you go through, God will get you through whatever it is that you're going through. And the way he gets you through is by the grace he gives you. Listen, is there anybody this morning, is there anybody that thanks God for his grace? Listen, if it wasn't for the grace of God, you wouldn't even be here this morning. I know you think you have your ability. It was your car that got you here. Listen, it was your own intellect. But it was God's grace that got you here. It's the strength of God, the unmerited, unearned favor of God that gets you here. And, and I want you to understand that, listen, whatever you're going through, it wasn't meant to kill you. And I want to encourage you this morning that whatever it is that you feel like you have to go through, go through it. Don't avoid it. Don't go around it. Listen, don't pray it away. God says this morning, he wants you to go through it. Because listen, you do have enough strength. You do have enough grace. You've got what it takes. And listen, and if you don't have enough, you don't think that you have enough, God's got enough. God is yeah. enough. God can do exceedingly abundantly above all with their acts or faith. And that's the word. Somebody should say amen for the word of God. Amen. The word of God says in Ephesians that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can think, ask, or imagine. So whatever we ask for God, God will, the word of God says that God will exceed our expectations. That God is able. God is able. God is able to take you through whatever it is you're going through, no matter how hard it is what you're going through. Somebody shout, God is able. God is able. God is able. And I don't want you to think that just because you prayed to God and he didn't take that thing away from you, that God didn't answer your prayer. Listen, I can't help but to think about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed the same prayer three times. Lord, if it be your will, take this cup away from me. Take this cup away from me. And he prayed the same prayer three times. And he ended up that prayer saying, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And that's what God is saying this morning. Not our will, not what we want, not the way we want it, but his will be done. Because I promise you, all things work together for good. Listen, listen, it's not, listen, if it's not good, God is not through working on you. It's not over till it's good. Whatever you're going through, it's not over till it's good. Because all things work together for good. And I want to show you this in the passage of scripture today in Daniel, the third chapter, uh, beginning at verse number 16. It's a very familiar passage of scripture, um, but God still has a word for you. And listen, I want you, listen, you've, you've declared that you're ready to receive God's word. Then when you're ready to receive God's word, that means that you're not going to go out of those doors the same way that you came in. Anybody ready to receive the word of God? Amen. Come on, come on, give God praise for his word. Can we pray for his word? God is his word. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able. Somebody shout, God is able. God is able. The God we serve is able able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from it. I love it. From your majesty's hand, but even if he does not, we want you to know your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image or of gold you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual. Seven times. Somebody shout seven. Seven. 
seven times hotter than usual and he commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the bla blazing furnace. So these men, wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace was so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, your majesty. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed. And the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached uh, the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps, the perfect governors and royal advisors crowned or crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their head singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any God except their own. Lord, we thank you that your word is blessed. One more time, let's praise God for his word. Amen. Come on, let's clap your hands and bless God and his word is blessed. Immediately, I want you to see uh, uh, in the text that we all will have to go through some type of fiery trial. We cannot avoid it. We cannot avoid going through fiery trials. Uh, but fire often comes because of our faithfulness to God. The, the, the trials that we face, the fiery, fiery trials, the tough ones come. They don't come because we're doing wrong, but they often come because of our faithfulness with God. Listen, it takes faith. We walk by faith and not by sight, meaning that we can't allow fear, the feeling of fear that we may have, the feeling of anxiety to dictate our lives. Listen, we walk by faith, meaning that we continue to live our lives by faith. Even though you may have a feeling of fear, even though you may be apprehensive about whatever just happened, that's okay. But we cannot allow that feeling to allow us to turn and take flight or want to run away from whatever it is that God has called us to do. God's purpose will be fulfilled. God is faithful, and God is faithful in the fire. The reason that I'm talking about fire this morning is because last week I told you that whatever it is you're going through, it wasn't meant to kill you. And, and there are some things that you will not learn from God unless you go through. Some of the lessons that we learn, you're not going to get unless you go through. You're not going to learn it by going around it. You're not going to learn it by God keeping you away from it. Listen, some of the lessons that we learn uh, about God and learn with God, we're not going to learn until we are in the fire. Listen, listen, I'm not asking you to testify or anything, but I, I would just want to ask, is there anybody that may be in a fire this morning or just gotten out of a fire? If you're in a fire or just gotten out of a fire, can we just thank God that God is here with us, that God is faithful? Listen, 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 if there's anyone, listen, I'm telling you that we cannot avoid the fiery trials that comes our way. But I need to tell you this. The reason that the enemy will send fiery trials our way is to get us to give up on our confidence in God. It will get us to not completely commit to God. Listen, it will get us to, to, to be some time with God because as soon as something comes our way, then they want us, the enemy would have us to not depend on God, to not trust God. He'll use these trials to try to get us to turn 
and flee from whatever it is that God has called us to. Because I believe that the enemy has peeped into your future and has seen what God has for you. Listen, I believe that. And he wants to keep God's blessing from you. If you believe that, how many know that the blessing that God has for you, it is for you? Amen. Sometimes it's like the enemy has more faith than us about our future. It's like he sees what God has for you, and he tries so hard to keep us away from it, that, and that we can't even see it, that we just yield. But listen, what God has for you, it is for you. And no devil in hell can keep it away from you. But there are some of the lessons that God, listen, here, here's the first lesson. It takes courage to stay committed. It takes courage to stay committed. Here you have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, everybody knows that God's people were taken captive into Babylon from Israel. God even allowed that they were taken captive uh, from Babylon, uh, from Israel to Babylon. And the king selected the brightest, smartest uh, people, prisoners from Israel, and allowed them to come in the king's court because he wanted the best. So he chose the four of them. He chose Daniel, of course. Uh, he chose Daniel and then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel was his Hebrew name, and the others had Hebrew's name as well. But what the king did, the king changed their names because he wanted them to assimilate to Babylonian culture. He wanted them to forget about where they came from and adopt the new culture that they're living in. Listen, listen, that's, the, that's one of the things the enemy would try to get you to do. Listen, if you're a born-again believer, he, the enemy would try to get us to forget about what we have committed to, that we've given our lives to God. And we're trying to get you to assimilate to this new culture where we don't have to trust God. We don't believe God. But it takes courage to stay committed to God. It takes courage to stand for God and say, I love God. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's, listen, it is the power of God unto salvation. Is there anybody that's ashamed of the gospel this morning? If you're not ashamed of the gospel, somebody give God some praise in this place. Come on, come on. You're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. I'm not ashamed that I'm saved. I'm not ashamed that I'm born again. I'm not ashamed that I've been baptized. I'm not ashamed that I'm saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled. I'm not ashamed to say amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. It takes courage amen. to stay committed. It takes courage. And so when you choose this walk with God, when you choose this way of life with God, listen, it takes courage to stay committed. Because if you don't have the courage, you won't stay committed. We'll yield, we'll give in at the first, the first sign when the enemy starts to come, come behind us. Because I'm telling you, yes, God has a, he has a plan for our life. He has a future plan for us. Listen, listen. But you know what? The enemy has a plot against us. I want you to know, i got to tell you this. I hate telling you bad news, but the enemy does have a plot. And listen, his plot is to steal, kill, and destroy you. And he ain't playing. Listen, he used deceptions. He used offenses. And his most one of, his, one of his most powerful weapons is fear. If he can get you afraid enough to keep moving forward, he'll take his fear and allow the fear to freeze you and not move forward into what God has called you to do. And he has a plot to stop you. But how many know that no weapon... No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Even though the enemy has a plot, the good news is that God has a plan. God has a plan for you. Listen, God says, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you the future that you hope for. God's going to give you what you hope for. But you got to trust him, and it takes courage. It takes courage to stay committed to God. It takes courage to stay committed to God. Yes, it is. we're living in a day where we look on Facebook, we look on Instagram, and we'll see so many people that have committed their lives to God turning back, turning and taking flight, running away from this walk of God. We see that a lot of times because the enemy tries to highlight that. Uh, but what I would come and tell you is that God is, a, God is faithful. God is faithful no matter what you're going through, no matter how hot the fire is that you're going through, God is faithful. So one lesson that you learn from being in the fire is that you have to have courage. Courage means that I'm going to move forward by faith even though I'm feeling fearful. Even though I'm feeling fearful, I have the courage to move forward by faith. Meaning that I'm not sure what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen if I do this, but I'm going to do it even if I'm scared. Somebody shout, do it scared. Do it scared. Listen, if you know that God has called you to it, 
Just do it. Just do it. Listen, I don't care if you're, if you're scared, you feel the feeling of fear, and you know it's a feeling because it's not a spirit. You'll know it's a spirit when you stand and don't do what God has called you to do. But the Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear. Amen. Listen, listen, God has placed everything that we need down on the inside of us, but we have to do like Timothy did and stir up the gift. Come on, dear somebody to start stirring up what God has placed down on the inside of you. You feel like your joy is leaving. Do you feel like your peace is leaving? Stir God is giving up. you power. He's giving you strength. He's giving you everything yeah. you need. But sometimes you have to stir up your gift. And the best way you stir it up is by the word of God. God's word has everything that you need. It's got everything you need. It takes courage. In order to get your courage, I'm telling you, get in the word of God. Get in the word of God. It takes courage to stay committed. And when you're looking for courage, when you find yourself standing still, you're not moving forward. When you find yourself turning around and running away from what God has promised you, listen, get in the word. Get in the word. It takes courage to stay committed. Watch this. So, so, we, so we know that they went to Babylon. They were captive. And then these four were in the king's court. And, and listen, and they, were, they did so well that King Nebuchadnezzar, he promoted them. He, he, he enjoyed, he, uh, he liked them. He God gave the king favor with them. So he, with Daniel and all of his friends. So much so that the, the people that were already there in Babylon, the other people in the king's court did not like them. Listen, whenever God blesses your life, they're always going to be a hater. Y'all know that. There's always going to be opposition. There's always going to be somebody to hate on you. Listen, so, so what they did, they watched their lifestyle. They knew that they prayed to their God. They knew they were committed to their God. So what they did, they, they, they set them up. They went behind them, and they told the king, look, look, it's, you have a law that everybody should bow down when you blow the horn. But these three, the three that you promoted, they aren't doing it. They, they're not doing it. But listen, it doesn't matter. Listen, the Bible says, touch not my anointing. Listen, so when God has anointed you, when he's called you and he's anointed you, listen, you don't have to worry. Listen, because God's got you covered. Amen. God has got your back. Listen, God has got your back. And, 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 and that's one of the reasons that God wants us, allows us to go through what we're going through, to let us know that he's got our back. Go, go back to, to, to Daniel, uh, the third chapter. Listen, so here they are. They got promoted by the king. Everything's going well, even though they were still in bondage. They had their haters hating on them. And then, and then uh, uh, once they set them up, it says Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to, the, replied to the king. Because once the king heard about it, the king, he didn't like the news that he heard. Why? Because God had given them favor already. God had given them favor with the king. But so he gave them another chance. He gave them a second chance. Listen, listen, listen. They've been talking about you, but I'm going to give you another chance so that I don't have to throw you into this fire. And well, watch this. Watch how the community they were. Uh, so it's Jared, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. Why? Because they're committed. It says that if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us. They're saying that God is enough. Listen, if we don't have enough strength, if we feel like we don't have enough of whatever it takes to get through what we're going through, we know that God has, God has enough. Our Amen. God is enough. As a matter of fact, God is more than enough. Yes, he is. God will give you everything you need to stay committed to him. God will do it. Listen, it says that the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will. Watch this. Perfect love. Perfect means complete. You see, they have complete Confidence in God. Listen, when you're committed to God, once you receive God's love, you know how much God loves you, then listen, you're going to know God. You're going to have complete confidence in God no matter what you're going through. No matter what it is that you're going through, you have complete confidence in him. The God we serve is able, and he will, he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. Keep going, and then it says, uh, if we are thrown into, but even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your God or worship an image of gold you set up. Often to, I, I love that because it's, I hear them saying, not my will, but thy will be done. They're saying that we are, we are committed to God's sovereignty. God is in control. And God, I'm praying I don't want to go through this fire. God will deliver us. 
But if this is not God's will for us, if it's not God's will for us to make it through this, then we trust God because we know that God knows better than us and we're still not going to bow down. Listen, this is what I'm talking about. There are some times, there are going to be situations that arise in your life. There are going to be certain situations that's going to cause you to have to be able to live out loud. When I say live out loud, um, you have to make a statement and make a stand for God. There's going to come a time in your life. I, I remember watching on the news and seeing back in the day where um, there, there was this school shooting. And the shooter tried to get the person uh, to say, to, to denounce God and denounce their faith in God. And this person, uh, instead of whoever he was about to shoot, instead of denouncing their faith, all they had to say was, okay, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in God. And the shooter is saying that he would allow them to live. But this, this person's faith was so strong. They were so committed. It takes courage to stay committed. That even in an instance where he felt like he could lose his life, he would not denounce his faith in God. He would not turn back on God. And this instance that I'm referring to, when he, even when he didn't denounce his faith, they shot him. They shot him and killed him. But how many know that even when you die, that's not the end? It's not in. We live forever with God. To be absent from the body, to be present with God. Thank you. To be present with God. We have to understand that because there's going to come a time when you have to stand for what you believe. You have to make a public statement of your faith. When you have to live out loud. You just can't come to church and, 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 and just be saved at church. But there comes a time when you're at the job where you have to make a stand for God. I remember one time when uh, when I was when I was in training at Coca Cola and I um and I and this driver was training me. As soon as I got in the truck, I got in the truck. He asked me, he's like, "Well, he's like, so how long you've been a Christian?" I'm like, "Huh?" I'm like, "Did I have a pastor's badge or a Christian on me or nothing?" No, not have anything on me. But 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 just from the the way. That we live our, that we walk by faith and not by sight. So the way that we carry ourselves, it shows, and God gets honor from that. And there's gonna come a time, and and so when He asked me that, I told Him, "Yes, I'm a Christian. Yes, I believe in God." I said, "Yes," and I said, "As a matter of fact, I go to a wonderful church. You want to come with me?" I said, "God is good, and God loves you." And you know what? Every time I tell somebody God loves you, um, even though it sounds kind of lame and weak and simple, it is so powerful. And I have not seen one person who, who didn't receive when I share with them that God loves you. Because we all want somebody to love us. We all want to be loved. And I want you to know, even when you're feeling the most rejected, uh, feeling the most lonely, feel like everybody else is in relationship with you, I want you to know that God loves you. When you feel like everybody else is against you, it is easy to feel that way when, when people like this, like they did Daniel, uh, just because they were prospering, then they're trying to cause a problem. Listen, that's going to always happen. When you get a promotion on your job, when, when you get elevated, there's going to be somebody in your office, there's going to be somebody in there that's going to start hating on you. Y'all understand? Anybody know what I'm talking about? And, 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 and I'm telling you, the, the word of God says, that, he says, the Lord himself will fight for you. Exodus 14, 14. Y'all remember that last week? The Lord himself will fight for you. And he gives us a command. He says, just stay calm. He says, stay calm because they're going to hate on you because God has favored you. God has favored you. I'm trying to give you some reasons uh, to, to not go around this fire, to not avoid what's, what, what you have to go through. Listen, listen, to, to, not, to not avoid it. And because there are blessings, believe it or not, in the fire. And one of the, the most obvious one is the presence of God. God always promises his presence. When you're going through a fire. So whatever it is you're going through, know that God is in this thing with you. Amen. Amen. God always promises his presence. And that's a, and listen, God has everything you need. He's Jehovah Jireh, yes. the Lord God, my provider. Yes. The Lord provides. Yes. God is a God who provides. Amen. He provides Amen. everything Amen. you need. And, what, and watch this, not only what you need, he gives you more of everything that you need. Y'all remember when, 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 when Jesus uh, was preaching and, it, and, and the people got, 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 got I don't want to say got tired of him preaching, but he was preaching so long 
that they got hungry, and the disciples said to the master, listen, they're not going to hear what you're saying because you, they're hungry. You've been preaching all this time. They, they want to eat some real food, not just spiritual food. <laughs> and Jesus said, well, handle it. He said, handle it. And, and he told him to get, go and get that boy, go get that, what the boy has. Take the little boy that not even counted back then. Go get what he had. He had two fish and five loaves. Am I saying that right, y'all? Mm -hmm. Two fish and five loaves. And he took that it close enough, amen. He took the two fish and five loaves. They put it in Jesus' hand. And, and as soon as he put it in, God blessed it and he multiplied it. And he fed everybody that was out there. The Bible says 5,000, but that wasn't counting women and children. So it was more than 5,000 people that he fed from two fish and five loaves. Watch this. The point that I want to make is that when they were done feeding, when God was done feeding all those people, the Bible says there were 12 basketfuls left over. Not only did he have, did he provide enough of what they needed, God always provides more than enough. Listen, so if you're in a position right now, you feel like what you're going through has caused you to, to lose your love for people, has caused you to lose your love from God, because going through a storm, going through a fire, rather, since we're talking about fires, going through a fire can cause you to lose love for people. Huh. It'll cause you to, to almost hate the people that you thought you loved. Listen, 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 listen. But God, listen, no matter what you lose going through that fire, God has not only enough, but more than enough of everything you need. So go through it, and God will reveal this to you. Just by him being in the fire, they're with you. So, so here it is. The Bible says that, that um, the king gave him a chance. He gave him a chance to, to get out of it because he liked them. But then the Bible says that, that when, when, when they took a stand, it says that the king was furious. He got hot. Because don't forget, he's king. He's narcissistic. He's arrogant. He says, okay, I tried to give you a chance. He said he was furious. That's what the Bible says. Furious with rage. And he says, you know what? He said he summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and he brought him for the king. And he says, turn the fire up seven times higher. Turn it up seven times hotter. Seven. That's God's number. He's using God's number. God's perfect number. Seven times hotter. Meaning that this fire is going to be so hot that as soon as they, as soon as they, they touch it, they're going to disintegrate. They're going to burn up. Turn it up so hot, but he said, turn it up seven times hotter. And then, and then what happens that is that if you look at the Bible, it says they brought it to the furnace. The furnace was heated seven times hotter than usual. Keep going. And it says that it, he commanded some of the strongest soldiers. He didn't just get anybody. He got the strongest soldiers in the army to tie them up. So they didn't go in there free. They came in there bound up. Bound up to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Watch this. And threw them into the burning furnace. Keep going. So these men were wearing the robes. Watch this. Wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes. It's a reason the Bible puts that in there. Because like I said, they had favor with the king. Your clothes represented your status in a society. So their clothes weren't like some of the other's clothes because they were part of the king's court. So they had turbans and, and royal clothes that represented that they were important people of, of status. But watch this. So they had their clothes on, their robes, trousers, turbans, and they were bound and thrown to, watch this, a burning furnace. Keep going. The king's command was so urgent, the furnace was so hot that the flames of the fire, it killed the soldiers who took them up. Listen, the people that were against them, listen, listen, God will turn that thing around. What the enemy meant for evil, what the enemy meant for bad, God will take that thing and turn it around for your good. The people that were hating on you, the people that were mistreating you, the people that were talking about you, trying to cause you wrong. Listen, the Bible said you don't have to, you don't have to take vengeance yourself. You don't have to do anything. God himself will fight for it. God will turn that thing around. He turned it around. Amen. And the ones that, that tried to throw them in there, tried to throw them in the, in the fire, they got burned up. You ever heard somebody say, listen, when you dig a ditch for me, don't just dig one. Dig one for you. Y'all know how that thing go. Y'all know what I'm saying, don't you? Yeah. It's on, listen, that, there it is right there in the Bible. Listen, listen, listen. They tied them up. And they, was, and they had the strong, not anybody, the strongest men to throw them in the fire. And then, and then if, you, if you look at it, it says that they fell because the way the furnace was, um, they, it had like a chute at the top of it. And at the bottom is where the fire was. And you can actually see 
they took a furnace because it held a lot of people. It was, it was their form of execution. And so they had to, they had to, when you when you when you got thrown in there, they had to throw them in the top. There it is. It says, and these men firmly tied, you see this? Fell into the burning furnace. It didn't say they just walked into it, how we have the picture sometimes. No, they threw them in there. They fell. And even the fall itself should have killed them. But they survived the fall. Listen, can we stop and take a praise break for praise break for a minute? From, and praise God for the fact that whatever the enemy had planned. Presence for being with us in the fire. 
That's so powerful. That God promises his presence. The fourth, Jesus was right there in the fire with them. And they were walking around with the joy. The joy of the Lord. The joy. Somebody shout joy. Joy. Because I'm telling you, the first thing that a fire, listen, I'm talking about a fire set seven times hotter, as hot as it can be. You feel like you're not going to make it through this? Listen, listen. There's still joy. I, I told y'all last week, I remember Nanny saying uh, back all the time when I used to go to church, when she made me go to church with her, and I he used to hear her sing a song, she say, after all I've been through, I still have joy. Is there anybody can be like Nanny and share that testimony? After all I've been through, I still have joy. And you still got joy. If you got joy, you should be able to give your God some praise this morning. God, I made me in the fire, but God, I still got my joy. God, I'm walking around in the fire, but I'm walking with my joy. God, I'm walking with my peace, God. God, I'm walking around with joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Watch, walking around in the fire. Don't miss this part. Unbound. Unbound, meaning that it were bound up. So now we see the function of the fire, the purpose of why God allowed this to happen to you, one of them anyway. It's so that he could, he allowed the fire to burn up what had you bound. Oh, oh my God. God will allow what you're going through to bless you. But you will never experience this until you go through it. The only thing that the fire burned was what had them bound. The chains that had them bound. The addictions that had them bound. The fear that had you bound. They keep you from moving forward into what God called you to the only thing that the fire is going to burn up, that's why I encourage you this morning to go through it. God is more than enough. He's more than able. You've got enough strength. You've got what it takes to make it through this. Look at somebody and say, you've got enough. You've got, you got enough. enough. You've got enough. You've, you've got, got enough. enough. You've got enough. Because God is with you and he is more than enough. He's more than enough. Yes, he is. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise. Hallelujah. That's give God some praise. Give God some praise. Listen, the enemy uses fiery trials trying to get us not to commit to completely to God, but God used this same trials to bless us, to get the glory from. Watch this. God gets more glory from us going through the fire. Y'all got to get this. I know you're not going to believe the words that are coming out of my mouth. But God gets more glory from us going through the fire than keeping us from the fire. Why am I going through what I'm going through? So that God can be glorified. God gets more glory. Can God keep me from going through this? Of course. God is able. Somebody shout, he's able. He's able. Don't doubt God. God is able. God can do exceedingly abundantly. Above all, we can think, act, or imagine. You have to stay committed to God. You got to stay confident in God. Don't let this fire shake your confidence. I love that. Watch this. Daniel wasn't even with it. Daniel was their leader. He was their pastor. And they had this. He had to be a powerful pastor. Because he wasn't even in their presence. Because they had, uh, Daniel got, he got promoted and they got promoted. But Daniel, he had to stay with the king. And they got promoted over another province. So they were in a whole different province. And, and Daniel wasn't even there. But they still had enough commitment to God, even without their pastor right there. They were still committed with God, committed to God. They had confidence in God that God will get us out of this. He can get us out of this. And even if he don't, even if God doesn't get me out of this fire, oh my God, even if he doesn't get me out of this fire, I'm still not going to serve you, Satan. I'm still not going to serve you, Satan. I'm still, I'm not going to serve you. I'm going to only worship God. My confidence is in Christ. God gets more glory from us going through the fire than keeping us from the fire. It, it, it takes courage to stay committed. Your faith can survive the fire. And watch this. One last reason I'm done. We're getting out of here. Watch this. One last reason to go through the fire is because, watch this, there is favor in the fire. Listen, there is favor in the fire. God will bless you in the fire with his presence. God will bless you with his power in the, in the fire. You'll know who God is because everybody doesn't know who Jesus is. You won't know God as a deliverer until you get in the fire. You won't know God as a way until you get in the fire. Everybody don't know who Jesus is. And it's not until you get in the fire that you'll 
see his favor on your life. This fire can't hurt me. Right. It right. can't hurt me. Why? Because God is with me. Yes. God is with me. Amen. Again, I, I told y'all about uh, when I was working with Pope, and immediately God, God took me to Daniel, uh, the third chapter, because I was thinking in my mind for some reason when I was at Coca-Cola, you know, God, I made more money at Coca-Cola than I did any other uh, job that I had. And uh, when I was at Coke, um, I was preparing to come pastor here. And we were about to start the ministry. And we hadn't started yet. And so I'm trying to, you know what it takes, how many know it takes money for ministry? Yeah. Joe, let me tell you this. Can you think about starting the ministry? It takes a lot of money. <laughs> it takes money for ministry. And, and watch this. So I'm at Coca-Cola making money. And, uh, um, and then all of a sudden, I got thrown in the fire. Um, I got fired from Coca-Cola. I got fired. Me, the you know, the one who the guy I got in trouble. The guy he said, "Hey, you a Christian? A Christian?" And I asked the question, "Oh God, can Christian get fired from the job?" <laughs> I'm a Christian. He said, you, you know I live for you. You know I don't deserve to get fired. God's like, why not? Why can't you go through this fire? And, and He showed me this immediately. Because I was in denial at first. This is impossible. There's no way. I'm, I'm Lee. I'm, you know, I can't get fired. Please. He made me think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, which those were the Babylonian names. Uh, um, somebody help me with, with, with their Hebrew names. Hananiah, uh, Mish, Mishael, and the, uh, y'all, y'all is in there. <laughs> but watch this. I got fired from Coke. And immediately, the first feeling I felt was fear. Because God called me to pastor a church with no money. That's impossible. And then I'm getting fired. That will make me look bad. That's a bad reputation for somebody to be fired. But, but, but God showed me, no, it's not because you did something wrong. It's not. No, God showed me. He's saying that I am God. He said, Lee, look, you're depending on this money from Coca-Cola and, and, some, and the people that uh, a promise to partner with you. He said, no, it's not them that's going to make this happen. God says, Lee, I'm all you need. He says, not only am I enough, God says, Lee, I'm more than enough. More than enough. I'm going to give you more money than Coca-Cola can give you. Listen, God Amen. says, I'm more than enough. For if there's anybody out there like, like me who lost the job, God says, don't worry. God says, I'm more than enough. Yeah. I'll give you more than enough money. You know, God's not going to give you just some money. And then watch this. As, as, as COVID hit, as COVID hit, uh, and people stopped coming to church. Y'all know, y'all know what happened. Stop coming to church. And they were watching online for a little while. But they stopped watching online. Then they send money flowing. They stopped sending money. I said, okay, okay, God. Uh, but you know what? Since that happened and, and, and people left and money left, you know what? God, God says, Lee, again, I'm not only am I enough, I'm more than enough. Listen, and, and we had more money with everybody gone than when everybody was here. Because Amen. God says, I'm more than enough. Can somebody Amen. give God praise? Thank God for the fire. Thank God for going through your own Thank God. Today, this day, February 13, 2022, after two years of COVID and people not coming to church and stop sowing money, God is God is a provider. Joseph and Jehovah. God is a provider. Jesus, start playing that for me. God is a provider. Provide. Watch this. We still to this day have a, not a half a staff, a full staff, a full staff. Why? Because God is a provider. God is a provider. And the same way God provides for his church, he says, listen, he says, upon this rock, Jesus Christ, I will build my church and the gates of hell, fire, shall not prevail against it. Not COVID. Not folks who hating on you think when they leave and take their money, they're going to hurt. <laughs> God, listen, listen. You have to stay committed to God. And it takes courage to stay committed. Keep your confidence in God. Stay confident, no matter how hot the fire is. Not only are we still here, we're celebrating seven years of God being faithful, of God, of God being a way maker, of God being a promise keeper, of God making a way out of nowhere. Listen, God is Jehovah God, the Lord God, my provider. Listen, the same way that God provided a way for us, God will provide a way for you. Stand it to your feet. God, I speak. Freedom. Not only 
is there. Favor in the fire. Watch this thing. And there is freedom in the fire. When you go through that thing, the only thing the fire is going to burn up is whatever held you bound. If you can't stop gambling, if you can't stop drinking, if you can't stop gossiping, if you can't stop looking at pornography, whatever, whatever is hell you bound, whatever enemy, whatever stronghold you're in, the strongest soldiers, the devil's stronghold, whatever the enemy's been, had a stronghold over your life, fear, loneliness, rejection, whatever's been holding you bound from, from having the joy of the Lord and the peace of the Lord. The fire is going to burn it up. The fire will burn up whatever hell you bound. It'll burn it up. And God will set you free. So they were bound. Listen, as an act of faith, for those of you that have been through a fire, any type of fire, it may not have been as hot as their fire. Can we lift our hands and show God that God I'm free and he who the Son has set free is free indeed. I'm free from every, every ungodly desire. I'm free from everything that had me bound. God, I'm free. Somebody shout, I'm free. I'm free from negative thoughts. Being negative. But I'm free to worship you. And God, I thank you for providing me freedom. Thank you for providing favor. That I can go through that I'll make it through this. That I'll make it through this. And then the king saw them at the end. The king said, he said, the same one that put them in, God could have got them out. But God says, watch this. I'm not going to get you out. The one that put you in, the one that hated on you, the one that spoke this against you, I'm going to make them get you out. The king says, come out. He says, Shadrach, Meshach, the villain go. He says, come out. God is saying, it's time to come out. And whoever puts you in there, God's going to use them to get you out. Because God has turned their life around. God is getting the glory as you go into this fire. God is not glorified. God is now magnified. Why did they go through this fire? So that he can be glorified. You have to understand that. When one nation would take another nation captive, that would mean that that nation's God is God. And that nation's God is the God that you will serve. That's why they changed your name. Because your God didn't have what it takes. Now you're going to serve my God, so we're going to change your name. Uh -uh, but, but, but the king says, no, your God is God. And then he say, anybody who speaks against the God of Shadrach, against the God of Meshach, and against the God of Abednego, then you'll be punished. God turned it around. God got the glory, and so they went through that so that so somebody else wouldn't have to go through what they went through. The reason you're going through what you went through is that so somebody else will have to go through the same fire. Somebody else will have to go through the same pain. Listen, go through because God got what it takes to get you through it. If you believe it, come on, give God some praise. Come on, come on, come on, give God some praise. Come on, give God praise. If you believe that God will provide, he'll provide your peace. He'll provide your joy. He'll provide your money. He'll provide whatever you need. He'll provide. Hallelujah. How can I be more loved than I am right now? Wasn't holding you up. So there's nothing I can do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. I wouldn't do 
conspire with you. Well, you'll know him as Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider, who will provide everything you need as you go through what you're going through. Listen, today is your day. You don't allow fear to keep you from receiving everything that God has for you. The most important thing you can give God is not your money, but it's your heart. And if that's you today and you want to give your life to Christ, listen, if that's you, all you have to do is trust and believe, have faith in Him and faith in His Word. And pray this prayer with me. Everybody stand into the feet. Please. And everybody pray with me. This simple prayer, even those of you that are in this family of faith, come we're going to pray and believe that others can join this family. That's our call. That's our purpose. That God be glorified and continue to add to his kingdom. And this is your day. If you never commit, somebody shall commit it. Committed your life to Christ. Where you're trusting him fully. You're trusting him fully, even in the fire. You're not allowing the fire to make you turn away from God. You've been through hell. There's hell in your house. God wants you to have faith for the fire. And the only way you're going to have enough faith for the fire is that you have Jehovah Jireh. Because not only is he enough, he's more than enough. Let's go ahead and pray this prayer. Dear Jesus, I believe that you love me so much that you took, your, took my place and died for me. I believe that on the third day, you rose again right now, Lord Jesus. Forgive me of all my sins. I need you. I need you to be the Lord of my life for the rest of my life. Come on, if that was you, come on, leave your hand up. Come on, let's praise God. Come on, let's praise God. Come on, that's you. You're out there. You're here. Come on, we praise God for you. And we say welcome into this family of faith where we have a God that provides everything, not only everything, but more than everything we need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. At this time, at this time, we're going to ask Dick Bryant, the group that plays, you may have your seats, and I like the fam, I like the families, uh, the families of Kinsley Marie Allen to come join me, of Kinsley Marie Allen, and Layla, beautiful, Amelia, Marie, Green, all these Marie's. <laughs> I'm so excited to have my sister in the house with us and my daughter. I'm so excited. God is so good. God is so good. God is so, so good. Come on, all these families, come on up with them. Come on up with them, Deacon. We thank God. We were just talking about a statement of faith. Y'all can just come like this right here, yeah. And face, well, face everybody else that's left, left out there, face the congregation. Amen. That's good. Amen. We've been praising up this beautiful, beautiful family. Look you over there. Oh my God. Amen. God bless you. Still family, always and forever. Amen. 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 And I thank God for what this family is doing. This, this family is making a public statement of faith that I'm trusting God to provide everything that I need as a parent, everything my child needs that's going to bring them up strongly, bring them up like they are beautifully and perfectly. Trusting God, you're placing our, our children in God's care. There is nothing greater that you can do for your children. It's to place them in the care of God. Amen. And I thank God that you made this choice. That you made this choice. And God is not only going to provide everything that Kinsley and Layla need. Amen. But God's going to provide more than enough. Of what they need is and what you need. Wow, it's beautiful. 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 Beauti
Catholic Pantry one more time. Okay, can we give it up for this family one more time? Amen. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. I present to you God's children, Kinsley Marie Allen and Layla Amelia Marie Green. Can we praise God for them one more time? God bless y'all. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. Oh, here, here, Deacon. Amen. God bless you. 